University in Allegheny County are higher than we would like them to be. And so we will not be holding in-person, face-to-face worship for at least this week, October 25th. We will make sure everybody knows what the ongoing plans are. And we'll try to plan more than a week at a time so that you have an opportunity to really get organized. You should have a new autumn 2020 morning prayer leaflet that will, if it hasn't come in the mail, it will come to you shortly along with the November devotions. And in with that will also be at least this week's lesson insert. And now let us take a moment to gather our hearts, our souls, and our minds as we prepare to worship Almighty God. Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with the one who has a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and for on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient heart confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By, by what we have done, done and, and by what we have left undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We, we have, have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, Son, and to the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. Amen. Be joyful in the Lord, all you hands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, that the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Let us read together the portions of Psalm 90 from our lectionary answer. Lord, Lord, you have been our refuge from from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight, Yesterday, when it is past, and like watch in the night, 
sweep us away like a dream, we fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes, in the evening it is dried up and bitter. Return, O Lord, how long we dare. Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your slander to your children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands and prosper our hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. First reading is from Deuteronomy 34, 1-12. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pegah, Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho, and the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev, and the plain that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees as far as Zor. The Lord said to him, This is the land in which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died, and his sight was unimpaired and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days, then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequal for all the signs and the wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land. And for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read together the first canticle from our worship bulletin. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not on your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than the earth. And, and my thoughts and your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return to the night, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The 
The second reading is from 1 Theologians 2, 1 through 8. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you is what was not in vain, but though we are already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to the entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with the words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor do we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for your own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Our response to that reading is the second canticle from your worship leaflet. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, and King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him more questions. The Gospel of our Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Love God, love your neighbor, Love yourself. Really, what can be easier? Of course I get that warm, fuzzy feeling about God when I think of God's goodness to me. And of course I love myself. That neighbor part, that, that might be a little tougher. But most of my neighbors, the ones like me at least, are fairly easy to love. Is that all God asks of us? <coughs> In a little book, Dudley's Dog Days, Joining Faith to Life, 
by Harley G. Rush. There's the story of a family who bought a Cocker Spaniel puppy named Dudley. On their way to Grandma's house to show off the newest member of the family, they stopped at an ice cream store. It was a hot summer day. And, of course, Dudley was given an ice cream cone, too, just like everybody else. Next, they stopped at a hamburger stand for some food. And, of course, Dudley had to eat, too. He'd hardly gotten the hamburger down when it came right back up, along with the remains of the ice cream and the cone. They finally get to Grandma's house, who, when she heard the story, quickly gave her grown-up son a tongue lashing. How could you give a puppy ice cream? Don't you know anything about taking care of the puppy? The author writes about his experience. We were inexperienced at showing love to a dog. Although we loved him at first sight, the technique by which we showed that love needed a lot of improvement. Some expertise was definitely needed in the art of loving a puppy. Society has told us by means of movies and television that love is something that just happens. Caring for another is something that you just do. Well, how wrong can they be? To love takes the desire, but also a lot of practice, preparation, and perspiration. We discovered with Dudley that there are proper and correct ways to show love to a puppy. There are also acts that can be motivated by love, but which in effect are unloving, like ice cream cones for puppies. Today, we heard Jesus label the top two on the Hits for All Time Commandments list. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Three parts. First, love God, then love others, and then it's assumed, of course, that you love yourself. These are not commandments to be doormats, to lose ourselves in others, to be what today we might describe as codependent. Neither are they commandments about that warm, fuzzy feeling that we call love. That feeling can't be commanded anyway. They are commandments concerning showing love to God and neighbor, about wanting and doing what is best for God and for our neighbors, and putting our own selfish interests back, maybe out of the picture. Because the opposite of love in the Bible is not hate. It's selfishness. Jesus is telling us to be committed to God and to our neighbor's welfare. And you know what? That kind of commitment isn't easy. That kind of love needs those three Ps. Practice. Preparation and perspiration. Every time I think about love and church, it reminds me of Bishop Curry's famous love sermon at Harry and Megan's wedding. Love changes things. Love is what will bring about God's kingdom here on earth. Not warm fuzzies, but commitment to God and to others. Each night this month, we have said a psalm as part of our compliment phone service that expresses this kind of love very quickly, clearly. Psalm 86 says, Knit my heart to you, that I may fear your name. Here, fear is not terror or being afraid, but rather awe and respect for God. And that knitting part really gets to me. 
When I sew, or if I were to build something, I take two or more pieces of things and I put them together, but they are still two pieces put together. When I knit two pieces together, the two pieces are joined so that you can't see them as separate pieces. They become indistinguishable. Imagine how that would be between God and us. How would it be if we are knit together so well that our will is God's will? That what God wants us to do is what we want to do, too. That truly is loving God with all our heart and soul and mind. And indeed, it does require those three Ps once again. Practice, preparation, and perspiration. Recognizing that we love ourselves as part of being a healthy human being, we are also called to love to be committed to our neighbor's welfare just as much as we are to our own. And who is our neighbor? Well, we've all been around church long enough to know the answer to that question. Our neighbors are all around us, whether we like them or whether we agree with them or not. All people are God's children. Therefore, all of them are our neighbors. That means we're committed to everyone's welfare, including our own. The three Ps, once again. We could visualize our love for God and our relationship with God as a vertical line, right? God is up and we are not. And then we could visualize the love for our neighbors as a horizontal line as we reach out to each other. And when we put the two together, the vertical line and the horizontal line, what shape do we have? We have a cross. The cross of Christ Jesus, who was the perfect example of what it means both to love God completely and to love one's neighbors as oneself. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and peace. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promised Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus, let us pray to the church, those in need and all of God's creation, saying, Hear us, O God, and responding, Your mercy is great. As the whole church focuses on us to love you and our neighbors and the ways we create policy, define our mission, determine budgets, and vision for the future, we pray for our leaders, Bishop Curry, Bishop Singh, our priest Carol. Hear us, O God, Your mercy is great. As stewards of creation, instruct us to love you and our neighbors in the way we use the gifts of this planet. Keep us mindful of the needs of the generations to come after us. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. As people of the world, teach us to love you and our neighbors in the ways we judge one another. Work for peace, set aside prejudice, and work for justice. Guide us to vote in ways to support our knowledge and love of you, O oh Lord. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As ministers of your word, teach us to love you and our neighbors and the ways we care for those who suffer, especially those struggling with the coronavirus, and the families, friends, and caregivers. Give us compassionate hearts, gentle hands, and minds that craft healing. We also pray for our sick, the Reverend Diana Purcell Chapman, Virginia Vosler, or anybody else you may know at this time. God's prayers. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. As a community, guide us to love you and our neighbors and the ways we share ourselves with others. Support us in building relationships, having open minds, and being confident in the good news of the gospel. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. As your children, lead us to love you and our neighbors and the ways we remember those who have died especially those who have guided us, guided us in faith. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord, your word is a lamp for our feet. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray together the prayer on the back page of the worship bulletin. 
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your worthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and for loving kindness to us and to all whom we have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the whole of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your grace, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Last, bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world.